Hello and welcome to my video. My name is Emily Woolwich and I'm here to help you understand a little more about inventory models. Today I'll be discussing what an inventory model is, the types of inventory model and giving you a further insight into the single period inventory model with real life examples and analysis of this model. So let's get started. We'll start with the basics. What is an inventory model? Well, Business Dictionary describes an inventory model as a mathematical equation or formula that helps an organisation to determine the optimal order quantity and the frequency of ordering to keep goods or services flowing to the customer without interruption or delay. There are two types of inventory model, the single period and the multi-period. The single period model is used for an ordering decision that only occurs once. Businesses use the model to balance not running out of stock, but not being left with stock that does not sell. On the other hand, the multi-period model is used again and again in stable situations where product demand is constant, price does not vary, ordering costs stay the same and all orders for the product will be filled. It is used when there is a fixed order quantity, which is where orders are placed for a set amount each time, and the placement of an order is done when an event occurs, such as reaching a minimum stock level. The model is also used when there is a fixed time period when orders are placed. For example, when there is a monthly review of stock levels. The amount of the order will depend on the amount of inventory that is needed. In this video, we'll be focusing more on the single period inventory model. This type of model is described as stochastic. This means that the situation will have random variables and it is assumed that demand is from a probability distribution from a previous period of time. This model is also known as the newsboy problem. This is because the principles of the model are similar to those of a newspaper stockist. For example, they have to decide how many newspapers to stock for each day and any unsold newspapers will be of no use for the next day and therefore have no salvage value. So they must forecast the optimal level of newspapers in order to avoid wastage and save costs. Apart from newspapers, there are many other situations where the single period inventory model is used. As a rule of thumb, the products being sold are perishable, meaning they will not keep for long periods of time and have a very short shelf life. For example, the booking of airline seats or hotel rooms, fashion items that can only be ordered once from a fashion house at the start of the season, merchandise for a one-time sporting event or concert, seasonal goods such as Christmas cards that are not worth anything in the new year, groceries and flowers. Moving on to an example problem that you may see in a textbook that requires using the single period inventory model. This problem is for discrete data. There are other problems for uniform or normal distribution but discrete data is what we'll be focusing on today. So, a card shop stockist buys a box of Christmas cards for 60p and sells it for £1.20. The demand record over the last month is as follows. You are then given a table showing the amount of cards that were bought on how many days and the consequent probability resulting from this. So, at least 60 boxes of cards were bought on 10 days of the month, so the probability of this is 0.1 and so forth. The problem then asks, what is the optimal number of boxes of Christmas cards that should be ordered? And then you must find the expected marginal loss and marginal profit associated with the 60 second item and decide whether this item should be stocked. In order to solve this problem, you must use marginal analysis. The goal in marginal analysis is to maximise profit by ordering the optimal amount of stock. When an additional unit of an item is stocked, there are two possibilities. Either it will be sold or it will not be sold. P is the probability of selling one extra unit and 1 minus P is the probability of not selling one extra unit. If the expected marginal profit is greater than the expected marginal loss, an additional item should be stocked. The business should then keep ordering inventory as long as the probability of selling that one extra unit is greater than marginal loss divided by the sum of marginal profit and marginal loss. Now we'll move on to a company case study. American Airlines has been using the single period inventory model, or in their terms, yield management, since 1985. 
It is common for people to cancel flight reservations for a variety of reasons, so American Airlines overbook flights using probabilities. The cost of underestimating the number of cancellations is the revenue lost due to an empty seat on a flight. The cost of overestimating cancellations is the compensation they must give to customers, such as free flights or cash payments, which are given when passengers are unable to board the flight they booked. Using the model to try and accurately predict the amount of passengers on each flight has proved hugely cost-saving for American Airlines, as after the first year there was an increase in revenue of more than 14% and an increase in profit of as much as 48%. Now, using the model means that they gain $500 million in revenue per year, as opposed to not using the model. However, in the EU particularly, this could all be set to change as the European Commission are trying to take action on airlines who they believe are not treating their customers with respect in terms of overbooking their flights and causing them delays. This video from the BBC explains more. Virtually every flight you travel on is overbooked and it's not an accident, it's the company policy of almost every major European airline. Usually people think, well, it's a one-off occurrence that's just happened, and it's not. On, particularly on busy routes, you, you find it quite a bit. So for me, it is a bigger problem uh, than is actually admitted by the airlines, and it's a bigger problem than, than certainly the travelling public understand. Airline policies on delays, cancellations and compensation are in the sights of both the European Parliament and the Commission. They're in the process of strengthening EU Regulation 261, it's supposed to safeguard passengers' rights, but Brian and his colleagues fear it's barely worth the paper it's written on. The airlines have driven the coach and horses through this regulation. Really what we have now, and the reason why we are looking at this regulation again, is because the regulation has been abused by the airlines to the detriment of the travelling public. So it looks like in the future airlines will not be able to use the model to overbook flights. Now we will analyse the model. So, the clear advantages are that it saves costs as the optimal amount of stock is being ordered. Therefore, there is less wastage so the business owner does not have to throw stock away. Also, having the right amount of stock greatly improves customer service as the customer can buy the item they want as it is in stock and they can therefore fulfil their want or need. However, there are some drawbacks to the model. Firstly, Using probabilities is not always very accurate, as it doesn't allow for particularly quiet days or particularly busy days, so stock could still be wasted or run out, known as a stock out. Also, the model does not take into account other factors that may affect demand, for example the weather or the time of the month, as if it's at the end of the month, not many people have that much disposable income left. Finally, the model is time consuming, as the business must collect the demand figures that determine the probabilities and then input them into the formula. However, taking all things into account, I believe the efficiency of the model depends on the business, as it can work for some, as demonstrated by American Airlines, but might not be suitable for others. Finally, here are some key links to explore the topic further. The first link gives a useful overview of inventory management as a whole and includes some helpful videos. The second is a chapter from Operations and Supply Chain Management, which is also very beneficial and simple to understand.